How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Black Swamp Comics. Today we are going to be doing a review on Hot Girl number one. Uh, we're not going to be doing the Night Terrors this week. I think there was only like a couple issues that came out. Uh, the main storyline didn't really come out this week. So I'm just going to wait till next week uh, to read Wonder Woman in this well. But I decided to go ahead and uh, take a chance on Hot Girl number one that came out here um i think what really put this thing on my radar was the recent casting for hot girl in james gunn's dcu i think that's a really good casting i really don't know like much about the actress or but i know she's an actress like she's not like a instagram model or whatever but i kind of do like the castings and where they're going and i know there was kind of some complaints about like whether this casting is whether the casting of all these characters is going to make ultimately a superman legacy movie crowded and i was kind of thinking to myself i was like well james gunn did say that he wanted to have the comic books and and the movies connected so i was like so they could use comic books as a vehicle to advance the story so then when you get to the movie you know a lot of the things that have happened you're not starting from the beginning uh, I mean, it's a good idea, but whether it works, it's going to be a different story. So that was, I think that was one of the main reasons why I was like, you know, I'm going to give out this hot girl issue uh, a little, uh, give it a try out and see what I like and see if I like it. It is one of six. So right now, as of right now, it is a mini series. Uh, let me uh, butcher these uh, creator names for you real quick. Uh, written by Jadzia Axelrod drawn by Amanke Nahulpan, colored by Adriano Lucas, and lettered by Hassan Otsami Olahihu. Olahu. Oh, man. I'm so bad. I can do the Spanish names, man, but I'm terrible at everything else. Um, so, yeah, I don't have any knowledge of Hot Girl, just to do mostly, like, basic Wikipedia stuff, like first appearance a little bit about like where she comes from i know she like reincarnates with the hawkman and stuff like that i've only read like the silver age like pretty much the, her appearance in the first satana issue the justice league unlimited i remember the episode with solomon grundy and then her appearances like in dark knight's metal or other justice league events but never really kind of dove in into her as an individual character so i was kind of like Yo, this is a, this is a perfect opportunity to kind of get to know this character and uh, see what's going on. Um, however, I was disappointed. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This this comic book was not that great, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that it's probably like one of the worst comic books that I've read this year. And um, overall, I don't read a lot of bad comic books. Most of the comic books I generally enjoy, I think, because I'm usually picking, I'm usually picking, I know what I like and I know my taste. And every once in a while, I'll take like a little gamble on something. Um, and uh, and I took it on this one and uh, I didn't really like it. This was not a very good comic book. And, and we're going to get into it and I'm going to explain to you why. So uh, the art in here is really good. I did enjoy the art in here, uh, especially when it first starts off. I actually like the story like uh, the first few pages, you know, like I kind of did enjoy it um, because it looks like they were starting off to something and then it just kind of went off like it, 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 it you know, because the first few pages you got this woman, um, Maureen, right? And uh, she's walking through the rain holding groceries in a paper bag, which you never, you always know it's going to end up badly. And uh, she's got like this devilish lady per coming after her apparently she made like some kind of deal in exchange for a pony uh she sold her soul for a pony i guess when she was younger and she ended up getting the pony but then the devil lady came uh to charge so it was an interesting premise i was like okay where are we going with this and then we jumped over to modern days with um with Kendra, I believe is hot girl's name. And she's kind of fighting like some throwaway villains that don't matter. It's something that you see a lot in comic books when they're kind of just, they just need a villain. It's kind of like um, the Royal Flush Gang or Calendar Man. You know, you just need a jabroni just to be there, you know, not to be taken too seriously. Um, however, like, I, I think over, I think Hot Girl to me, the way she was introduced in here, 
she came acro uh, across to me <laughs> like depressed you know like like she feels depressed i don't think that was meant to be on purpose she just feels depressed just because the book is written like you have all these action panels going on with all these superheroes and and they don't they're not even challenged enough like uh like i don't care like how easy a fight is like you're always kind of like focused like if you've ever been like a fight or whatever uh you're kind of like in in there the adrenaline is running but here they're just kind of running through the motions you know not really caring they're having like a whole conversation like like it's like friends at central perk you know what i mean and uh so it <sighs> It works sometimes, but it just didn't work in here. It was just like too distracting. There's too much of a disconnect between what was going on and the thing. And I think the biggest thing though is the dialogue. When I tell you guys about like some writers that are really good about it, they uh, they disguise their voice and they get lost in the characters. And you hear the characters' voices. Uh, you hear Batman's Con uh, Conroy voice in your head when you're reading the pages and the dialogue. And a lot of times sometimes and other times it just feels like they're puppets you know like it, like the writers you know using them as puppets to kind of talk around and i have a great example of what i mean by that like here in this panel um they're kind of trying to so superman and power girl and you know black canary are trying to get kendra some help because apparently they know she's depressed or something there's something wrong with her but she's denying it so there's something about the Blackhawks. Like they're talking about what group she was in, and then uh, Power Girl's like, "Oh, what's wrong with the Black uh, Blackhawks?" And then Superman says, "It was a whole thing. Uh, I'll tell you later." So uh, that's where it, it kind of took me out. Like this panel of Superman talking, like it's a whole thing. Like that's I don't. I never see Superman using that kind of dialogue. Like he sounds like a college millennial from like 2015 or 2014 you know what i'm saying like it like it's a whole thing and the thing is is that all the other characters use the same kind of dialogue as well like i think uh power girl uh used the same thing later on where she says it's, it's a whole thing as well and and it just feels like there isn't a whole lot of like differentiating between the characters they're just puppets trying to you know they're just saying the script you know and this isn't like power girl from like you know this is already the new power girl that doesn't feel like power girl so there was like kind of no hint of familiar familiarity in the story i think that's very powerful uh and that's a very powerful tool that's underestimated the the power of familiarity you know it's kind of like when you listen to music that's why like when you listen to a song you might not like it the first time the more you hear it uh the more you like it it's because your brain is kind of predicting that familiarity right that that rhyme the music right same thing with rhyming and music right because you're expecting that next thing so you're you're getting that reward right um, so whenever something feels like it's supposed to be familiar, but it's completely alien, it's kind of off-putting. It's kind of like listening to a jarring remix of your favorite song. You know, it's like, it doesn't match. It, it doesn't even feel like the same song. There's some things that don't make sense. Like hot girl just falls out of the sky for no reason. Apparently power girl, Superman and black canary, none of them notice that she's fallen to the ground and uh, somebody caught her some new character named uh, Galaxy. Um, Galaxy is just kind of lame to be honest. Like, she's just lame. Uh, she's got a little corgi. I like the corgi, you know. Um, but Galaxy, not, not not so much. I don't know, really know what her powers are. I guess she fixes hot girl's wings just like that, you know. Like, I thought maybe we were gonna go explore, you know hot girl without a wings and maybe get to know a more grounded version of her but that only lasts for like a page and then um and then there's this whole thing where you know hot girls gotta go and then meet like an old college friend and uh the college friend starts hitting on her and then there's like some hints that we might be seeing the future of kendra like maybe uh pursuing the same a same sex uh relationship which will kind of hit this panel like there's this panel here that i guess I'm, i think this is supposed to be kendra like like this is supposed to be a throwback to her with the way she was in college now normally when you include like um uh like po political stuff like this to me it's not necessarily a deal breaker 
Uh, I like exploring controversial issues, especially stuff that is really layered. Now, the whole BLM thing, I would love, love to maybe take in Hot Girl as a vehicle to explore this thing and uh, her having to go explore it. But, uh, you know, she kind of just becomes a part of it. And this is like the only panel of it. And then and then that's it. And that's it. So, so it's kind of it's kind of just in there like it's a it's a very it's a very strong panel and it's just in there and then and then it just it's just gone like that so um i don't know i don't know if it's supposed to be like political bait in there for the conversation outside of comics maybe a lot of times i feel like writers are always thinking you know what the reaction to their book is going to be on social media so they're kind of like posturing for that um uh, i don't know it just feels like the attention's not really on the book and developing the the characters um and then i don't know it's just weird uh then you got go back to the villain and uh by this time i'm kind of checked out like by this time of the book i was kind of checked out i felt like i was really going nowhere um you have like the tension on this villainess uh she seems kind of interesting i'm not gonna lie uh, i would like to kind of see what what that's going but i think this the galaxy stuff man that's uh galaxy is so off-putting man like i don't know why like i i think, feel like she could be interesting but the way they're presenting her here um i don't i, I just don't know i think i i want to know I don't i guess i didn't get enough hot girl <laughs> i got i got too much galaxy here i i didn't want to meet galaxy i wasn't expecting to meet galaxy here uh or be exposed to as much galaxy and i i just don't think i was exposed to as much hot girl as i want so overall i didn't like this this uh this comic this comic was just not for me um and even if i say it's not for me i don't think it's for anyone i just think it's an objectively poorly written comic um it's it's only a six issue mini series so w with these single issues you, you can they can always improve you can always have one bad issue bad start and then finish strong or something like that but uh but i don't know <laughs> I don't think I'm going to keep going. I might look into it into a trade or when it's on the app, uh, when, when it's included onto the DC Infinite app. But uh, as far as right now, I don't think I'm going to be checking out any Hot Girl, which is kind of it's kind of disappointing because I was really looking forward to getting to meet Hot Girl and uh, and adding a new character to kind of like my little my 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 little fandom um anyways if you guys read hot girl you guys let me know am i missing something am i just dumb and do i just not get this book i believe night terror should be back to full swing next week so we'll take a look at that when it comes back uh, again uh and uh yeah man thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one all right take care peace